Hey, my loves. Welcome back to another episode of the Euro Cooking Canuck once again. Thanks for joining me. You guys know I really appreciate it. I hope that you are keeping safe and keeping healthy wherever you are in the world. Guys, on today's segment of Memories of Macedonia, I want to show you a really special recipe. This is such a good recipe. If you've ever been to the city of Veles in Macedonia, you might have tried what they call Veleshka Tava. It's a regional dish to the Veles area. Um, you can cook this in a casserole or in a clay pot um, or anything that you have. It's decadent, it's really homey, really rustic, and you guys are gonna love it. So without further ado, let's get in the kitchen and let's make Veleshka Tava. Aide! <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen countertop and as usual guys all of the amounts I'm using today and the ingredients will be below just click show more and they'll all be there guys today's recipe um, this will serve two very hungry people or four average hungry people so two to four people if you want to double this recipe go right ahead you can have it as well let's get started um, for our Veleshka Tava, the first thing I have here is some minced beef that I've already spiced ahead of time to sit in the fridge and marinate. The spices I use are very simple, I'll put them below. It's paprika, it's a little bit of agueta, salt, pepper, garlic powder or garlic granules and onion powder. Okay, very, very simple. And I let it sit in the fridge, that's why I made it a beforehand. So the first thing we're going to want to do with our minced meat is we're going to make kind of rough meatballs or rough koftenye. And I'll show you what I mean in just a sec. All right, guys, I have my board out here. And guys, I always wash my board after every um, application. I do have another board, but actually wood is better than plastic. Um, believe it or not, that's what they say. Um, just scrub it good and I use an antibacterial soap as well. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is just take a little clump. It doesn't have to be big, probably the size of a walnut. And you're just going to rustically do something like that with it. It doesn't have to be fancy. It can have little bits peeking out like little crunchy bits that they'll get crunchy. That's all you're looking for. It doesn't have to be fancy. Guys, get the kids to do it. And you see how quickly it comes together. The shape don't matter. You can make these smaller, larger, up to you. Just show you a couple more. Just really rustic. All right, so continue doing those until they're all done, and then we'll head to the stove. Last couple here, guys. So as you see, they should be like little bite-sized, rough-looking koftinya or um, meatballs. All right, now let's get to the stove. Hey guys, welcome to the stove. I have some vegetable oil heating up in my skillet. Guys, use a deep, wide skillet for this if you can. So we're gonna go ahead and start adding our little meatball koftinye. If you have to do this in batches, do it in batches, guys, because you want to get these crispy. They're going into somewhat of a stew, which you might think defeats the purpose. However, it does make for nice contrast in texture. So I have my heat on medium high. I don't want to overcrowd my pan. I'll cook these in a couple of batches. And when they're done, 
I'll bring you back and show you what you're looking for. All right, guys, they're small, so they don't take long. But what you're looking for is a really nice, dark crust. You can see that. A very nice, dark crust. Don't worry about having to cook them all the way through. They probably will anyways because they're so small. So this is my first batch. I'm going to take these out and I'm going to continue with the second batch and then I'll show you what I do next. Hey guys, what I have here is a half a kilo of a pork roast. I got a kilo and just cut it in half. I've washed it and I'm just going to pat it dry. Okay, good enough. All right. What you're going to want to do now is cut these into cubes. About the same size as your little koftinje or ham or meatballs. All right, so if you have a narrower end, make it bigger. Those are okay. Like on this one, you make it bigger and then bite-sized chunks, like so. So continue chopping up your pork. If you have a butcher or you can get this already chopped up in the market, happy days, but it's cheaper to buy it in bulk, guys. I'm going to finish chopping this up and then I'll show you what I do with it. Okay, guys, I've chopped up all of my pork into fairly same size pieces as our beef. I'm simply going to season this with a bit of Himalayan pink salt or you can use sea salt some cracked black pepper and just a bit of garlic granule Just give this a toss, clean hands. Now these are ready to go. I wanted to mention to you as well, um, make sure your little meatballs are nice and dark, probably darker than you normally go, but you don't want to burn them. That crispiness will add nice texture to your tava. All right, so pork ready. Let's head back to the stove. All right, guys, I'm using the same pan. I've just removed most of the oil from the meat and the oil that we added. You don't need too, too much, but you want a bit for your pork. Put your pork in. This time you can crowd the pan because we're not looking for We're not looking for a very dark caramelization or loads of color. We just want to get them seared with a bit of color. Now guys, I don't remove the fat. You can if you want. This wasn't very fatty, uh, but fat is flavor and it will melt in. So don't dry out your pork, leave a bit of fat on. Um, obviously if it's a big piece, you're going to cut that off. So cook your pork on a gentle medium heat and we're just looking for some color, a little bit. Don't fuss with it, let it do its thing, then flip it over, stir it up 
and I'll bring you back then. All right, guys, I'm getting some nice color on my pork here. See if I can show you a piece. Don't want it too brown. So at this point, I'm gonna turn my heat right to low and let's move on to the next step. Hey guys, so I've had my pork on a very low heat. In the meantime, sliver or slice a large onion and garlic cloves and you're also going to slice those. The amount of garlic you use up to you guys but it does call for a bit of garlic so I have quite a bit. You know me, I love my garlic. So go ahead and add that. onions and my slivered garlic. We're going to want to let the onions and garlic cook for about two minutes. Woo! It's smelling good in here guys. So you just want to saute your onions and garlic just until they start to soften and get aromatic. You don't want to get them with color or overcook them. That's great at this stage. They're soft. Okay, so I'm going to make a little hole in the center. And the garlic is getting a nice color too. It's going to be nice and roasted flavored. I'm going to go ahead and add some tomato paste or tomato puree. Again guys, the amounts will be below. Alright. Switch to a wooden spoon and just fry it a bit to get the raw taste out. And then start incorporating it in. And then what I have guys is some stock. I'm using pork and beef stock. I've used three quarters pork, one quarter beef. If you don't have pork stock, you can use all beef. You can even use chicken or even vegetable stock. If you don't have any of that, just use some water, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and add the stock. It's still hot. Lovely jubbly. What we want to do now is we want the pork to be tender but it doesn't have to be fall apart fork tender because we're going to cook this more later <clears throat> so bring this to a boil when it's at a boil i'll show you what we do then all right guys our mixture has come to a boil at this point you want to carefully give it a taste it's hot for seasoning um i did and this is perfect doesn't need anything else so now that this has come to a boil we're going to add a glass of wine cheers red wine preferably add your wine Immediately, it should reduce the temperature. Oh, it smells great. Again, now we're going to bring this to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, I'll show you what we do with it then. All right, guys, our mixture has come again to a boil. And I've let it sit on the boil for a little while, um, about five to ten minutes, <clears throat> just to reduce slightly. In the back here, I have 
Sorry about that. I have um, some oil, a little bit of water, and flour. going to thicken our mixture a bit. So pour that in. Give that a mix. And if it's too thick later on, guys, you can always um, add some more stock or liquid. So now we're going to let this go until it gets thicker. And I'll show you how we pull all of this together. Okay, guys, I've turned the heat off our pork. I have my tava here. You can use a clay pot like this, a casserole dish. Just use something with a wide circumference. I wouldn't use a Dutch oven, and you'll see why later. So, going to carefully add the contents into my tava. And after you add the flour, taste it again, guys. Mine was <laughs> perfect, didn't eat anything. But you want to taste for seasoning. Then go ahead, add your little meatballs or coftinha. Gently mix. It's already looking amazing. It's not even done, guys. Look at that. Oh. Then, I have some washed mushrooms here. Whole mushrooms. Try and get smallish sized mushrooms, guys. And they're going in. It looks like a lot. Because it is. But guys, you know what happens to mushrooms. They shrink right down. Gonna give this a gentle mix. Get all the mushrooms in there. And again, guys, if you feel you need to add more liquid, go ahead and add more. Because this is gonna go in the oven. But the mushrooms have a lot of liquid themselves. You can check on it as it's cooking, and if you feel it needs more liquid, add more liquid. However, this is not meant to be brothy or soupy. It's meant to be kind of thick, um, as it is right now, actually. All right, I'll mix that up better. Then you can optionally add just a pinch of oregano. Just the smallest pinch. If you like, you can also add some bay leaves. Give this a gentle mix. Make sure everything is kind of covered. <clears throat> Like I said, if you feel you need more liquid, go ahead and add it. But the mushrooms do melt down and they have lots of liquid. All right, what you're gonna do now is you're going to cover this with tin foil or a cap or a lid, whatever you have. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover it with some parchment paper. <clears throat> and I'm going to put the lid on it. This is going to go into the oven at 200 Celsius for about 20 minutes. And the reason being is we want now the pork to get really, really tender. All right, guys, and then I'll show you what we do after the 20 minute mark. Hang in with me, guys. Hey, guys, so after the 20 minutes that your mixture is in the oven, that your tub is in the oven, you're going to uncover your casserole dish or your tava, and you're going to continue to cook it 
anywhere between a half an hour up to 45 to 50 minutes depending on your oven you want it to have a bit of a gravy but you don't want it soupy okay so what i have here guys while this is in the oven and it's almost ready to go i have some cashcaval cheese if you can't find cashcaval cheese where you are mozzarella or provolone will do fine and i'm going to grate it so i'm gonna just cut off a piece to make it flat chef's treat you know quality control mmm delish mmm I'm gonna go ahead and grate my cashew cheese. And when this is all done, we'll bring the tava out. And you guys probably know what's next, right? Cheese is going on top. Oh yeah. All right guys, Valeshka tava is out of the oven. It's looking good. There's some beautiful gravy in there. The pork is tender and I've removed the bay leaves. So I'm going to go ahead and add <laughs> our Kashkabal cheese. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And like I said guys, if you can't find Kashkabal, use mozzarella or provolone, but look for Kashkabal. Um, go to Balkan shops, Turkish shops, um, it might be labeled as um, Kassir cheese. So go ahead and be generous with your cheese and I'm going to pop this back in the oven now under broil or grill just until golden and Bubble. Now, if you want, you can do this in individual servings as well, guys, if you like. Um, I'm showing you for the sake of how it's traditionally done for a family or a crowd or company. This is the way. And this is why you don't want a Dutch oven or something that's tall because you won't get a lot of cheese coverage. Okay? So, in the oven, this goes under broil. Or grill until just bubbly and golden hey guys look at our Valeshka Tava it's out of the oven golden bubbly beautiful have a look oh yeah so I'm going to let this cool down a bit. We'll serve some up because right now it's lava. Gorgeous. Guys, our Valeshka Tava is all done. Um, I portioned out some. I took a few pics. They'll be at the end. I want to give this a taste. Oh, look at the cheese, guys. <laughs> Mmm. Mmm. I got some pork and mushrooms. The pork is spoon, spoon tender, guys. Honestly, so good. Mmm. The beef is so tender mm. with crusty bread you have a winner here guys nice gravy I can't stop eating mm. guys this really brings me back to Veles you have to try this recipe guys I know the video was a bit long, but it is so worth it. This is one of the best things, honestly, I've ever made on my channel, and I'm not joking. It's so darn good. 
Guys, follow me on social media, like the video, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, come join me. I love to have you. Please comment. I love all your comments. I will reply back. And guys, until we meet again, please be good to yourself and to each other. And especially right now, what's going on in the world, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you so much. Fala mnogo. Aide prietno. Aide. Ciao.